everyone, Leanne Binder from Stamp Chatter. So a couple weeks ago, I made this Z-Fold Spinner card using this little flying pig from the stamp set, This Little Piggy. So watch what happens when I open this up. Cute, right? Let me show you how I made this, and then you can make one of your own. So you're going to need a few supplies. Um, the first thing that you'll need is uh, the framelit. So you're going to need the layering circle framelits or something like it. I use the three inch circle uh, in mine. Uh, you're going to use whatever size is proportionate to your image that you want to spin in the center of your card. Okay, so I use that and also the layering scalloped circle frame that also comes with the framelits. And you're going to need a few other things. You're going to need some invisible thread. I bought this at Walmart. It's quite thin. Or you can use some fishing line if you have it. Or maybe you could use some metallic thread if you've got that kicking around. Or the other thing you could use is maybe linen thread. Now I wanted to use something that didn't show for fun, so um, I used some invisible thread. So you're going to need those th three items. The other thing you're going to need is some crystal effects. Now I have still a really old bottle kicking around, but this works really, really well for what we're doing today. If you don't have crystal effects, uh, later on in the video, I'll show you a few different things that you could do um, besides using crystal effects, but that's what I'm going to use today. All right, so let's get started. First thing you want to do is stamp your image. And so I stamped my pig and I made a reverse image. Now, if you don't know how to do a, a reverse or a mirrored image, I've got a YouTube video on that as well. So go ahead and look at that so you know how to get a reverse image, a mirrored image, and just color them and cut them out. And put that aside for now. I'll put those over here. I took some Sahara sand. This is just a eight and a half by five and a half. And you're gonna score that right down the middle at four and a quarter. I'm gonna use the hardwood background stamp and some Sahara, Sahara, Sahara ink. And I'm gonna stamp three sides of this card. I'm gonna do the card front, which is here, just like that. Take some scrap paper so my hands don't get inky. Wrap that up. Okay, let's do it again. Open the card up and I'm going to do the insides now. You don't have to do all these sides if you don't want to. I kind of liked the way it looked. And one more side. Okay, this side. And put that down. Okay, so take that. Now we have three sides. I'll put that away. Here is my oh, outside, inside. Now go ahead and put a score line in the center of the front of your card. It's going to be at two and an eight, okay? Two and an eight. Let's go do that. Okay, so now we have a score line here at two and an eight, and we're going to fold it open. So this is your Z fold, a really simple. Z fold just like that. Now we're going to take our framelit. This is the three inch framelit and I've put marks centering the center of this circle. And I'm going to line them up on the fold just like that. I'm going to take a bit of washi tape so this doesn't move. Then we're going to take this to the big shot and cut it out. Now make sure you open this up because you just want this part to cut out. Okay, so your fold line is here. So let's take that to the big shot and cut that out. All right, so now that we have that cut out, we have our circle. I'm going to go ahead and, and finish this card before we do the spinning part of it. So I've cut out that middle circle here in soft sky. And let us put that. Some tape. And 
Let's assemble our card, get most of it finished. Okay, that there. Cut out some clouds. We're gonna put some clouds in there. Pick one up with my quick stick. This is just too tiny for tape, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here, Tombow glue. On the back. Just going to stick it down over here inside. Okay, I'm going to do the same for the gray cloud, and I used Stampin' Blends to color all these. Put that in there. Take the last cloud. I'm going to take my mini glue dots. I love those. Right. Just add one to the back of the cloud. Okay. Put that right over top, just like that. I want to give it a bit of dimension. All right. All right. Okay. So I'm going to take, here we go. So my pig's going to be here. I'm going to open this up and have the so she did saying right there. So let's use some black ink and stamp. So she did. Okay. Let that dry. And I want, she believed she could on the front. So I'll put a little bit of ink on the bottom here. And I'm going to cover that up with a scrap piece of paper there so we don't get it all over the place and I got one shot to do this so let's hope I do it right mm hmm okay there we go perfect she believed she could so she did all right so far so good right let's put this aside for a minute and work on your pigs well, my pigs, whatever image you'd like to use. All right, so here they are. I'm gonna take my invisible thread and I am going to tape it down. And it's probably really hard for you to see this. Tape that down to my work map here. And make sure you have a long piece to work with. You certainly don't wanna leave yourself short when you're doing this and pulling it fairly taut. Okay. You can't see the string, but I can. So I'm gonna center my pig. I'm gonna put some glue on here. Oops, it would help if I cut that string, wouldn't it? There we go. All right, get some Tombow glue. I'm gonna put glue on this side. So you've noticed that I've actually put some Sharpie lines on the back here. Oops, am I running out? That is because when I cut these two pigs out, I want, um, you're never gonna cut them exact. So I'd rather have a little black showing than have white, if that makes sense. It'll make sense when I put it together. All right, so let's line these up just like that. Tombow dries super fast, so we don't really need to wait too long for that to dry. So let's take our card that we made and see if I can remember how I did this. Of course, of course I can. Okay, go underneath and line up your image with the crease, okay? And that is lined up. It's even hard for me to see. I'm going to take a piece of washi tape and make sure that this stays down. Okay. Just like that. Just like that. I don't want it to go anywhere. All right. So now I'm going to take my crystal effects and simply put some crystal effects on here. And when this dries, this will 
There we go. This will dry pretty hard. I want that to be center, so make sure it's center. Glue that on. This glue is not working very well. Let me get another one. There's my other one. There it is. Pull that out. Really hard to see this. Hmm. All right. There we go. That's better. Okay. Put some down here. Now, uh, I said earlier that we would talk about the different ways to do this. So if you didn't have crystal effects, there are other ways that you can do this. This will take about mm, 20 minutes to dry and it'll dry pretty hard. Oops. Let's do that. Let's make sure your pig is centered. There we go. Okay, so there are a couple of different ways that you can do that if you don't have crystal effects. Um, I couldn't find mine earlier, so I went and used the fine tip glue pen, which is like crystal effects, but it's pretty watered down and it's not very strong. So I used some Suquing. I had some tape hanging around, and so I put some double-sided tape here and then put my invisible thread or whatever you're going to use. Make sure that's stuck down. And then put this over top because it's tacky and I didn't want it to be uh, overly sticky. And that seemed to work really well. Now, there's a, yet another way you could do this. You could also, if you didn't want to have this invisible um, line or whatever, you could just put designer paper over the front and actually hide your string in the front. Um, you can tack it down however you want with tape or whatever you have and just this part would all be designer paper. A lot of people do it that way and it's also very quick and easy. This was just a different method to do it, a fun way and you know not very many people are going to see that inside anyway. And then you just spin it when you're done. Put that inside an envelope and send it to a friend and when they get it how fun is that? So I hope you learned something today and you go ahead and make your own Z-Fold spinner card. Until next time, see you later.